Uh, science! Okay, D-Man. So science this week, I got two um, stories. One's real quick. Uh, I wanted to I wanted to bring this up because of the photo that was taken. It's a new image of the Messier 61 galaxy. And again, if you're only listening to this on our podcast, um, on the science mini episodes that come out every Sunday, these photos you can find right on the Fueled by Deathcast Facebook page. But here's a brand new photo. This was taken by ESO's VLT um, telescope, which now I love those, these science nerds. The name of this telescope is the Very Large Telescope at the Paranal Observatory in Chile. And it captured this amazing photo. Now, this uh, galaxy, Messier 61, is 52.5 million mi- light years away. And uh, it has an apparent magnitude of 10.2, which is roughly the size of our own Milky Way galaxy. And during the month of May, you can actually see this galaxy with a small personal telescope. Wow. Not in this quality. Yeah, obviously. But you definitely can, can, you can make it You would need a very out. large telescope in order yes. to see it like this. Yes. It was first discovered on May 5th, 1779 by Italian astronomer Barnaba Orani, but Orani th- mistook the galaxy as a passing comet. In the same night, French astronomer Charles Messier noticed it and therefore got his name and not the other astronomer's name. The cutthroat world of Wait, astronomy. Did Okay. Did Orani tell Messier about this, and he looked deeper and was like, "I get no." I think I think Messier knew it was a galaxy, and but Orani just mislabeled it and was like, "Oh, rats, huh? Sacre bleu." I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But I thought it was cool because it's a gorgeous photo of this spiral galaxy. Um, It's actually considered a starburst galaxy, much like our own Milky Way galaxy is. Um, The other thing that came up this week I thought was really great is uh, SpaceX tested its Falcon 9 ahead of a scheduled Crew Dragon launch this year. Now, this is history in the making, people. We have not had a crew leave American soil to go to space since we retired the space shuttle in 2011, I think it was, 2010. Um, Have we ever done it with a privatized vessel? Never. So Um, this is a a lot of firsts. This is a lot of firsts. So during a test on January 24th, SpaceX fired up the engines on one of its Falcon 9 rockets, uh, which is the vehicle that will perform the crucial crucial test fight for the NASA in months ahead. It's the rocket that's going to carry the SpaceX crew module. It's the Crew Dragon. Now, the Dragon capsule, if you remember, is the same capsule that's rocketed our coffee into space to the International Space Station. It's also the same capsule that bring supplies to the space station, but also satellites into low Earth or- orbit and back. Okay. And we've been using that pretty regularly since 2012. But this is the first time we're actually going to have a crew-manned spacecraft. Now, the, the, the launch in February is going to be unmanned just to prove that this capsule will do all the things it's supposed to do, and we can get it back down, yeah. and then, you know, try it without people yeah, first. yeah, yeah. And then we'll try it with people. So everything went according to plan. It was like not only do they need to test the rocket, but they needed to test it with the capsule on top. And then you could see also too the walkway going through there, to where um, the astronauts will eventually walk into the capsule cool. from there. Make sure that nothing, nothing's wrong, nothing's crazy. Yeah. Um, for the last five years, SpaceX and aerospace competitor Boeing actually have been developing spacecraft for NASA um, to transport humans to the ISS and also to just a space and back. Um, Boeing is working on something called the CST-100 Starliner, whereas the um, SpaceX has been working on the Crew Dragon. Now, the Dragon capsule was always created to be a crew unit. They just modified it not to be crew in the interim because they were like, we need to get supplies to this International Space Station. Let's just use it like that. Uh, This year... Both companies are hoping to launch the inaugural missions of this program, uh, known as Commercial Crew. And they actually talked about that when I went down to uh, Cape Canaveral in June of last year when our coffee got got up there. Each was each is tasked with performing unmanned flights first. Again, safety first, and uh, hopefully, you know, we're going to get manned flights within this year. The I mean, man- you got to think it's not only human lives that are at risk here if something goes wrong; it's the smartest people. Right. The most competent, like important people 
in the world. Right. You don't want to risk them. We just, we just, um, if it were me and Jeff, just like launch that yeah, shit. Just Let's see us. how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> we just went through two, um, actual, uh, anniversaries. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to say the years cause I, I forget the amount of years. Um, but we, we just passed the anniversary of Apollo one where unfortunately we lost those three astronauts in that, in that horrific yeah. fire, but they paved the way for, you know, us landing on the moon, even though they, so they never died in vain. And then just recently we, we, um, and this I do know it was 33 years ago we uh, lost all of the souls on the Challenger explosion. Mm. Again, even though they died, they paved the way for a better space shuttle up until we took it away. Yeah. And we're still using that today with what we're developing in SpaceX yeah. and with NASA and with Boeing and this kind of stuff. The Falcon 9 is an incredible rocket. It was designed for maximum reliability. Back in the day with like the Atlas and the Saturn rockets, it was about multi-stages of, of, uh, of rockets. You know, like you'd have the full rocket and then this piece would come off and then this piece would come off and then this piece yeah, would come yeah, off. Yeah. This is just two stages. There are nine rockets at the bottom of a Falcon, and that rockets it up through most of the atmosphere, and then it breaks off into another stage, the second stage, which is which is a, a, a main general rocket, and then there is a third separation. That third separation is the Dragon capsule actually right. leaving. And uh, um, it made history in 2012 when it delivered the Dragon into the correct orbit for rendezvous with the International Space Station, making SpaceX the first commercial company ever to visit the station. And that was when our dude... Don, Don Pettit, Pettit actually caught it with the Canadian arm and brought it in for the first time ever. So in, cool. If you go back to the episode where we had astronaut Don Pettit on our show, he was talking about how he trained and trained and trained for that while also working out a lot of yo-yo tricks at, at as well. <laughs> and uh, he was worried that it was going to be this bucking Bronco because it was not a NASA regulated thing and it was smooth sailing which yeah. is really really cool i love how connected we are to all this i know it's really we're, we're awesome part of this storyline in history and it's it's really amazing it really really all this is stuff fascinates me um so the falcon Nine has been like i said delivering um supplies and satellites since 2012 now in february we're going to test unmanned dragon crew and then hopefully in april that first that crew soon, huh? is going into space wow. going to the space station on that dragon crew. it really is a, a like completely amazing what the the technology leaps we've had in totally. the last five years and especially because of guys like elon musk and spacex and boeing and jim brinenstein the, the the head of nasa there you know i mean like it it, it goes to show when we, again bringing up don pettit when we were talking to an active nasa astronaut it goes to show just how everybody is on board to work together you know, we weren't alive when we were landing on the moon, but that was mired in the Cold War. And it was about USA and Russia and who yeah. can get there first and who's going to not, you know. And it was all this this competitive, which the competitive nature definitely pushed everything, mm -hmm. but it wasn't about this camaraderie. And we've talked about this on, on earlier episodes even. We just landed on the dark side of the moon. China did. Right. But it was a world effort. Sweden, Germany, all these people came together to make that thing happen. And we're doing the same now with SpaceX, with Boeing, with Blue, with all this kind of stuff. So it's very, very cool. Which is, gives me hope. Yes. I mean, that is really like, not only is that great to see the human race working that way, but there may be a day not so far in our future where we will need this technology to survive. Of course, of course, and it would it would be horrible to look back on days like today and go, why didn't we just work together? Right, and we're only gonna get we're only gonna become an interplanetary society if we do work together, and it's it's really cool to see how space exploration is you know just growing every single day. It's yeah. it's amazing, and what's really neat is this crew dragon capsule um so like i said before they would have to go down this walkway to get into the capsule like you know like in armageddon <laughs> or like whatever yeah, know, you, know. Right. you always Slow think of motion yeah, the, with or, aerosmith or, playing uh, the right stuff uh that that movie and uh i don't think i've seen that oh it's older but yeah same same kind of thing they they walk down the the, the long hallway to get to the the awesomeness yeah. you know Holding the, awesome the helmet adventure. and one arm yep. and like, slow motion explosions uh, the, behind the, them the no explosions no explosions no, <laughs> no the uh the shimmering air behind yep. them yeah yeah you totally know? totally um, so Crew Dragon uh, was actually designed to be an enjoyable ride. Now, if you look back to like the <laughs> Apollo missions, 
It was a tin can. Yeah. I, I can't say enough good things about First Man. If you haven't seen the movie First Man, check that out. It's all about Neil Armstrong and uh, those early Apollo missions. And it really is. like It was nuts and bolts and wood holding these things together. And hope hope to God that this all this TNT makes me go to the moon. Like, oh, my God. So now with new technology, we're obviously trying to make a more comfortable experience, you know, for space travel. Because why not? I mean, we, we're fans of Star Wars and Star Trek. I mean, everything was hey, way, way easier in that. Don't in that. lump me into that Star Wars oh, nonsense. Oh, baloney. I mean, it's sleek. It's futuristic. It's exactly where space exploration should be going. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I mean, you know, gone are the days of switches and dials and, and things. Like, we have this kind of technology now. So, I mean... What you got to see there, you know, um, it's got the, the cockpit itself. It has four windows so passengers can take in views of Earth and the moon and space as they're as they're traveling. And uh, the solar system the or, and the solar system and then the seats that they're sitting in, they're the highest grade carbon fiber. Yeah. And a lot more comfortable than the, the, the iron bucket of the Apollo missions yeah, or even the, even the even the, the space shuttle. Um, the. Uh, the Crew Dragon features an emergency escape system to swiftly carry the astronauts to safety if something were to go wrong. This was tested in 2015. Does it make like little pods? Yeah. Well, it wow. basically like separates the, the the actual cockpit from everything in case everything goes wrong, huh. and then you can get back to Earth. And um, it also takes it dampens the G force. So they're saying that it's all, you'll only experience the G's of like being on a ride at Disneyland, oh, okay. which is nice. Um, Crew Dragon's displays will provide real-time information on state-of-the-art um, uh, like displays, which is really, really cool. Anything from the Dragon's position in space to possible destinations to the environment on board. And again, I mean, we live in this technological age. Let's put the technology in place with our astronauts and not let them... Not have them work on 1970s stuff anymore. Stop using duct tape, people. Exactly, exactly. Um, the uh, the environmental control and life support system actually provides a comfortable and safe environment for crew members during their trip. They can uh, set their interior temperature between 65 and 80 degrees if they it's like. It's a Tesla. Which is crazy, yeah. We've never had that kind of thing before. It's crazy. And... Um, Finally, the uh, Crew Dragon will be fully autonomous spacecraft that can also be monitored and controlled by onboard astronauts and SpaceX mission control. And that is, that's normal. Because, I mean, even back in the days of Apollo, the Gs that were hitting the, the astronauts, you could move your arm and hit a button if you needed to, but why go through the stress? A lot of it was automated until they were in space right and it'll be the same thing where a lot of this will be automated but in the case of something that they need to they can take over the reins and take control no problem or it can be taken control remotely from mission control makes sense at space probably space. voice commands who knows who knows hey siri please yeah. get me out of this exactly thing. and not only that um uh they're also designing new space suits which is really cool to to integrate new technology and we've talked about that on the show yeah before, like too. i mean if you look at the spacesuits that like Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin had on the moon, big and bulky, and they could they had a little bit more mo mobility with their hands, but not much to the point where you know they had readouts a little bit on on you know their arm and on their chest, but it was very much Darth Vader. Whereas now it's they're gonna have like a touchscreen and yeah. their gloves Sleek. will be. Sleek and light yeah. all around, very yeah. kind of cool. I mean, it looks like it, it will perfectly match the interior of this capsule. Yeah, and uh, I'm very excited for it, guys. This is, like I said, it's history. the future, man. This is history in the making. The the astronaut, the first astronaut crew, has been t training nonstop for this since they'd been announced last year. We get. In just a few short weeks, we get the test run of the Crew Dragon, and then fingers crossed, everything goes well. And in April. Crew Dragon with Crew, and you know we're going to talk about it oh, right yeah. here on Fueled by Deathcast.